If you've ever opened an STL file and found yourself wondering what exactly is an STL file, well, this is the video for you. Right now, I'm looking at a cube that was made in the 3D modeling program Blender, and we're going to take a look at this 3D model and also figure out exactly what an STL file is and how it turns lines of code into a 3D object. When we export a model like this, we have to create an STL file, and an STL file is just a triangulated mesh. So we can look here and visualize what the STL file will actually look like. In this case, it's a series of triangles that turn into a cube. This is a widely understood process, but what's a little bit interesting is how those triangles are actually saved in the STL file. A little known fact is you can open an STL file in a text editor to see the contents. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We are gonna take this STL file and open it in a text editor and see what information it contains. Here we have our STL file open in a text editor, and the first thing that we notice is it appears to be made of the same seven looping lines of code. We start by defining a normal, then we have an outer loop, we have three vertices, end loop and end facet. And then it continues on like this throughout the model. And our cube, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, has 86 lines of code in it that define that mesh. So now we're gonna dive into how this works and how we can create a 3D mesh from lines of code. Now that we know how data is stored in an STL file, we're going to take a look at how we can convert those lines of code into a 3D model. For our model, we're going to go ahead and use this cube, which is technically a 3D model with hidden vertices and edges, but for the sake of clarity, we're going to leave it in a 2D representation. So here we can see there are three discrete elements making up this cube. We have vertices, we have edges, and we have faces. If we go back and open the STL file, we'll notice that each vertex follows the Cartesian coordinate system and has an X, Y, and Z coordinate. So for instance, for this first vertex, we have x1, y1, and z1. Going back to our 3D model, we can look at the bottom left at the Cartesian coordinate system and know x1 is gonna to be to the right, y1 is going to be towards the back, and then z1 is going to be towards the top. So that gives us this location right here, one, one, one. Now because this model was made in Blender, it goes from negative one to one, putting zero somewhere in the middle of each line. If we take a look at our second vertex, now we have negative one, x, 1, y, and 1, z. So coming back to our model, we know that this is going to be on the negative side of x, it's going to be back, and it's going to be at the top, which gives us negative 1, 1, 1. We can repeat this process for the final vertex, which is at negative 1, x, negative 1, y, and 1, z, which places it at the lower left. These three will form a face, or triangle, that has a defined normal. This normal means this face is pointing outwards, so we know this is the outside surface of the model. So what happens if we decide to delete these vertices? Well, although you might think it's just going to remove this triangle, what happens instead is we remove that triangle and all of a sudden we have multiple edges that are no longer fully defined. So while we've only technically removed one face, we've caused pretty significant problems in defining this geometry as a whole. From here, if we try to pull this into software to create a solid model, we're going to start seeing some errors. So with all of this in mind, we're going to delete one of these faces along with all associated vertices and import that file into our 3D slicing program. This gives us the file cube missing face, and all we've done here is delete the top face from that cube, and we're going to see how the printing program interprets it. So here we can see the result of deleting one of those faces. We now have an STL file that effectively has a hole in it. It's no longer a watertight mesh, and it's missing the top triangle. However, because this is a planar surface on the very top of the model where the missing triangle is, when we go to slice the file, the printing software is still able to successfully interpret this as a solid body, creating infill and an outer perimeter. Where this gets a little bit tricky is if we start to orient the model at a slight angle. While this is still technically a planar surface normal to the top of the model, the slicing program has a hard time understanding how to fill this gap. So when we go to slice the file, we get an error message saying there are empty layers. And we can see if we scroll through, the slicing software has created a little bit of a gap where we would normally have model material. This is a pretty typical scenario when we're slicing models that have missing faces. 
I use STL files almost every day, and there's something really interesting about opening an STL file in a text editor and seeing what's inside. It's sort of like seeing the inside of a factory. You get a newfound appreciation for everything that comes out of it by seeing all the work that goes into it. Feel free to leave me a comment with any questions, or reach out to me directly on Twitter. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.